Alright, alright, let's get right motherfucking to it. You already know what time it is if you are here. Honey, first of all, how was y'all week? Thank you for tuning in last time. Last week we had Miss Jenny in Uptown Jenny with our special guest host for our teas and cocktail says, um, segment. Mm. Suave. That was fire, right? But let's get right into it. The moment y'all been fucking waiting for. So today... Today, honey, is the day. Y'all have been asking for a minute for me to bring on Mini, the motherfucking stallion. So, let's motherfucking go. That's who our special guest today is on Mystique Talk Podcast. I had to change my name, Mystique Talk X or whatever it is. But you motherfuckers know what time it is. So, let's get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and bring in Mini, the stallion. We got a lot of questions today. We got some fan questions. Y'all gonna know who she is today. Our special guest, Adele Film Star. Yay! Many of the motherfuckers tell you, thank you for coming today. Thanks for having me. Yes. So, girl, there is so much that I'm gonna talk to you about today. And the, the goodies is we even got a special guest host once again on Mystique, Mystique X Podcast. Oh, my God, Jeremy, edit that out. We got a special guest today on Mystique Talk X podcast. Another special guest. He's going to help me host today. We, I, I need help with Minnie the Stallion, child, because she is a lot small <laughs> but plentiful. We got Trucifer DeVille today to help me go on and get this podcast going. Cam Star, motherfucking legendary Cam Star, Trucifer DeVille is coming through today. And we're going to get it to look at this. Look at the love. <laughs> look, look, look at this. You wish you was here. But you are. So let's get right into it. So today, Minnie, let's first of all get into where did you get your name, Minnie the Stallion? Because to me, I mean, you small, Noah, but you're very big. <laughs> she a big fucking deal. Um, originally, my name was TT the Miniature Stallion because I felt like, to be sure, I was still kind of thick. But um, when I started, like, maybe the month before I, like, blew up, I started working with Rich the Piper, and he was like, what's your name? TT the Miniature Stallion? Ain't nobody finna type all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like Mini Stallion. Mini Stallion sound better, sound better for you. You look like a Mini Stallion. So, and Period. therefore, Mini Stallion was born. So, shout out to Rich the Piper. He's a male um, performer out of my, uh, Miami? Tampa. Okay, out of Tampa, out of Florida. Where, that's where you from, huh? I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida. Okay. Yes. So, let's, let's, let's get right into... Let's get right into Trucifer DeVille real quick because he's going to have the next question for you. Go ahead and let the people know who you are, where the fuck, how you so legendary as a cam star. Then you go ahead and get into the next question for Miss Minnie to stay on your baby. You know, I've been popping it off with uh, Chatterbait for a long time. Got almost like a million followers on there. Live sex shows. Wow. Had a little baddie that I did a lot of shows with to get my uh, name started. Uh, Daisy DeVille, Trucifer DeVille, you know what it is. True Stories Entertainment. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So then I merged into the content creating a little bit here. You know, I dabble in a lot of things, production, all that. Okay, when did you start? Uh, 2016, I think, yeah. So a legend, seven, okay. Seven Stop playing with him. Seven years in the game. <laughs> okay, so get right into it with Miss Minnie the Stallion. We will, you know, get, let's get into it. What's She's from here? Florida. Yeah. She started out in 2020. Yeah. Yep. In 20 motherfucking 20, she's small, but she ain't because she a big deal. Come on and give it to her. Most definitely. What's it like? What's, what's the journey been like? The journey was very fast, mm. but it's been consistent, and I'm hoping to keep it consistent for the longevity of my career in the adult industry. So. Okay. But it's been amazing. Just Blessings all day. All day. So this journey kind of started real fast. You know, let's let's slow it down a little bit for the viewers, you know. So let's see. We got Miss TT, Miss Miss <laughs> TT out here, but maybe like let's say like 18. Like you out of high school at that point, you a grown ass woman. Mm -hmm. Like what, what was that like being like do you consider yourself small? Um legally, I am categorized as a dwarf. I have like a not a severe, a minute form of dwarfism. So yeah, 
I consider myself to be very small. What's the requirements for dwarfism, just so I'm saying, as far like as height? For a, to be categorized as a dwarf, you're like between four, five, and four feet. And then a midget is between three feet and three nine. Okay, and how tall are you? Four, four. Four, four. Fun oh, size. <laughs> Fun size. Okay, so like, what was it like for you, like as a child, kind of being Minnie or T Miss TT Minnie? How was that like? Not as a child, excuse me. We're not going there, but I'm talking. <laughs> I'm grown at this point, so people that's under thirty to me is still children. You feel okay, me? Okay. So let me let's get it motherfucking correct. We're not weird. I'm talking eighteen and up. You know? Mm -hmm. How was that like being? Were you like sexual? Did you have a lot of guys on you because you were so small but mighty? Like, how was that? Um, I feel like. When I was 18, I had a very sheltered life in my childhood. So when I was 18, I really liked Paco. Like, I went to college. I went to Florida State, Florida A&M University. Edit that out. I went to Florida A&M University. Um, you know the best uh, HBCU in all of Florida. Shout out. We, gonna, we, ain't, we ain't gonna say nothing else. We ain't gonna say too much. Shout out to my alma mater. Um, okay. But I went to Florida A&M University and. I almost flunked out. Like I did flunk Man. out my my sophomore year because I was just having so much fun. I was just fun. partying <laughs> and oh, I had to actually get a job and work my motherfucking financial aid back so I could finish college. But mm. oh, I went off. But um, college was a place where I got to kind of explore myself sexually. But I feel like I didn't really have the push or confidence to really get into like, all right, what is it that you do and don't like until I got into the porn industry. Mm. Okay. So like, it sounded to me like you were, you wasn't really popping off with guys until you was about eighteen and over. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? What was your first time like? Was you scared of that big old dick? Or was it big? <laughs> I think I was like nineteen when I was first um, sexually intimate, and I feel like he didn't make me feel like oh you're so small, like I gotta mm -hmm. be gentle with you. He just made me feel like a average size bitch, mm -hmm. and that's what it was. And I feel like. In college, everyone attracted to me because I was short. I wouldn't say necessarily attracted, but they like had an interest in me because I was short. I was just different. Everyone knew like, you know that little short girl? Exotic. She's the shortest girl on campus. You know, you know who I'm talking about and everybody knows who I'm talking about. This is me. Um, but yeah, college was, college was that, that growing moment. But then porn is still actively shaping me as a person like I wouldn't say I attach myself so much to porn but porn has taught me a lot and as far as sexually business wise how to be financially smart marketing all types of shit I don't know if it's porn yeah, yeah. so now like you was going to college what was you in college studying I was in college studying childhood ed education so I became a teacher after I left college. I taught kindergarten and I taught fourth grade. And those were two of probably the worst years of my life. Like, oh God. Them badass was kids. So broke. Was it them badass kids? <laughs> it wasn't even the kids. And then my parents kids sending them was sick. Getting through it. Just my playing. kids were what, get, what was getting me through it. Like seeing that light bulb and having them run to me every morning. Like, oh, Miss TT, we can't wait to go outside. We can't. Like, they talking to me yeah. like, like I'm one of their friends. And then. You know, I just loved being around them and feeling like I was making a difference in little black children as a black woman being a teacher. Um, so that was a very fulfilling time in my life, but probably the worst time financially, personally, relationship-wise, just all around horrible. Because you just you just don't move good when you're broke. You, you're just not happy when you're broke. I don't care what they say, money makes you happy. <laughs> We need money. <laughs> we need some money. You don't know what I'm talking about. You better go to Skid Row and they got some money over there. They love it over there. They have a little community, huh? You see Skid Row. Y'all see, see if you have you need to come to LA. You'd be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> but so like when did you get like your first idea that you wanted to kind of maybe have sex on video? Like that confidence. Like was you worried that maybe you too small or maybe did you think you know what ain't no bitches out here small like me about to give it right. to them like i'm about to give it to them since. i definitely didn't think about it like that i just felt like um at that point i had taught for two years and that i was broke so i had to move back home with my family my daddy um and i'm like it gotta be another way to where i can do something fulfilling and i don't have to be give up my mental health being at home doing it like I was trying to get some money 
and get out of my parents' house and be by myself again because those college years of being self-sufficient, being by myself, and then being a teacher, being by myself, and then having to go back home, <laughs> not cute. So I was like looking for the next thing, like get me up out of there. So I was working three jobs, and then Damn. I... I was working three jobs. Awesome. I was working at Walmart, I was working at Ross, and I was working at Dunkin' Donuts. It's definitely worse. Um, crazy, crazy hustle. So, um, I seen OnlyFans, I just started getting into Twitter. Like, Twitter was like one of those things, I made one, I didn't understand it, stopped using it. Then I got to college, people were like, oh, you seen that tweet on Twitter? So I'm like, all right, let me, let me see what it's about again. So I started using it and understanding it, but it wasn't really like popping. Um, but then I started using it and I started, I guess, following the right people. I got on black Twitter and I started seeing OnlyFans and Miss Be Nasty and Rich the Piper and all those people. And I'm like, what's Only, OnlyFans? <laughs> I ain't never heard of no OnlyFans. I only heard of Pornhub, Brazzers, X videos. That's all I heard. So OnlyFans was something new to me and I made a note. Um, and I posted like bikini pictures and everybody like, you should make OnlyFans. You should make OnlyFans. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I don't know, I used to be a teacher, like, I still want to be a teacher if I do this, I'm probably never going to be able to teach again, and I cannot, um, but whatever, whatever, so then I did my first team with Rich the Piper, and it got me a little bit of, like, notoriety, and he, like, put me up on game, taught me about talent testing and all that other shit, and made me feel, like, comfortable doing collaborations with other people, so as soon as I was, like, we did our first two videos, I shot the Atlanta found the tallest, biggest dick nigga I could find. He sucked his dick standing up, and it was crazy from there. I've been up since then. Okay. <laughs> Damn, Gina. Yeah, yeah, get it. <laughs> so, shout out to Rich Piper, period. Like, he deserves a lot more. Um, than we'll, his flowers. You know what I mean? So, the other thought about, oh, the, oh, the other thought I want to get into is, like, so, from like content creating and starting a Twitter, you know, you, you also do mainstream pornography. Yeah, I do. And you're very great at it, you know? Where did that come from? Like, how does that start? Let's talk about your first idea of, no, I want to get off the home video, you know, what they call amateur. And mm -hmm. talent testing, if you guys don't know, is essentially... It's where you have to go if you're an entertainer. Yep. You know, you can't go to your doctor's office and come on set with those papers. It's centralized. People, meaning producers, directors are able to log in and see and check to make sure that you're clear to shoot. It's a whole system. This is an industry. Mm -hmm. Just so we clarify what talent testing is. But yeah, let's tell the viewers, like, uh, what was your first thought? Like, I want to go ahead and get serious about this whole thing and go ahead and... Um, First of all, how much did you make on your OnlyFans that you left your teacher? Oh, I was I was still uh, working with Walmart, Ross, and fucking Dunkin' Donuts. After you did the and content with Rich I, Piper. I was, after I did the content and with Rich Piper. And you went viral. Because I made like, so I made like, I made my OnlyFans in September. I did my, I made like $40 because I didn't really post anything but bikini pictures. Then I did my scene with Rich in October. I made like $400. And then I did that scene in, um... Atlanta with the tall, big, big nigga, Wizard <laughs> Kelly. Tall, big, nigga, nigga from Atlanta. Wizard right, Kelly, right. that's his name. Um, quote, unquote. But then I made $10,000, like, literally within that seven days. Like, that $10 Time to go. went to my pending, from my pending to my bank account. So I was like, Walmart, ain't, Walmart don't need me. Buy Walmart. <laughs> need me if I'm making this type of money. So um, I quit Walmart, got a house, and that's it was up. That's what's up. But so we, for like mainstream, when yeah. I decided I wanted to be mainstream, I feel like when I decided I could pop like that and I could be seen on multiple platforms, I was like, we're going to take it big. Like, we're going we're gonna to be on Brazzers. We're going to be on all the shit I used to watch when I was, yeah. you know, trying to get it, get it done, get it in there. Um, I want to be on all those sites. And I'm determined to be on all those sites that I can be that are allowing black women to shoot for them and be on their platforms and want to showcase us and how nasty we are because we are some nasty sluts. Okay? They just don't let us Hello. show all the time. Like, did you get, like, an agent when you first started? Or, like, let's tell them, like, what your first scene was like or, like, how did that even come about? If, you know, people are always wondering how to get into porn, mm -hmm. here's a good chance to listen about her way of getting, Minnie's way of getting into porn. So how was that? Yep, so I did that scene in November, popped. Um, then I went to AVN in January. 
Um, and Hussy Models reached out to me maybe in March, right before the fucking pandemic. Um, reached out to me like, yeah, we want to sign you, come take model, model photos, whatever, whatever. And they literally just found my email, DM'd me, like whatever way they were trying to contact me is the way they contacted me. And whichever one I checked, they is reached how I contacted out to them. Back. They was trying to right. get me like, what's your, what's your email? What's your DM? Right. We love it. Um, so they reached out to me and I accepted the contract. And then um, when we were able to start shooting again, when the pandemic lifted, um, and I started shooting for browsers and all that stuff. They went through my agent. I feel like you probably need, some people feel like you don't need an agent to get like mainstream scenes. And I've definitely seen some bad bitches get scenes without having agent, just being independent. But I feel like for me, I feel like it was a great move because it just gives me that like formal background of, oh, you have an agent. So like you have an agent for me to do business with. Let me do business with them and they send you out and you do what you gotta do. So I definitely love having Riley behind me, booking all my scenes, keeping me booked and busy. Shout out to Hussie. Shout out to Hussie. So you're still with the agency? Still with the agency. Probably I might resign. I don't know yet. We'll think about it. And this has been since what year that you signed with them? Since 2020. Since wow, that's a that's like a relationship. <laughs> that's amazing. So before I give it back over to True guys. I want to ask many, like, what was your first scene? Like, what do you mind stating what company it was for? And like, what was your first day on set like? Like, were you scared? Were you nervous? Were you excited? Like, what was it like? Mm -hmm. And then tell us about that scene. I believe my very first scene was for Brazzers. Was it for Brazzers? No, my very first scene was with Brickzilla, and it was for See Him Fuck. Okay. For no Hussy Pass. It's for Hussy Pass. I'm getting all my shit. So Hussy, the scenes. agency has its own company. Yeah. Wow. Riley has his own. He has see him fuck Hussy Pass, and I think him and Jax have another one, but I can't. Think That's of amazing. Of um, but yeah, he booked me with Brickzilla, and I feel like I wouldn't. I was ready. I was like, I done already did porn. This is just another person with a camera, watching mm -hmm. me and filming me with these bright lights. That's what I hadn't done before, but. Doing the act itself, nah, I was ready. That so you was ready, but it is a little different just so the viewers don't get it fucked up. There's like 10 people sometimes on set. Oh, facts. It's a lot different. So that didn't make you nervous? No. I felt like when you put your body on the internet, regardless of how, how many people you perceive to view you, like the internet is a whole system. So like, just because you on Twitter, you posted it and it gets 10 views on your page, somebody probably reposted it and it's getting millions of views on their page. So like, you just have to realize millions and millions and thousands of people are gonna see you on, see you naked. So like, being around a bunch of sex positive people on set, nah, I was definitely, I, I feel very free. Like when I walk into people's houses and we're all sex workers, I'm like, well, can I get naked? I can take my clothes off? Yeah, at this point, I that's smoking, life. I can get, I can no. School. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. What you got, True? Man, you know, I'm chilling. I'm just sitting back enjoying this wonderful <laughs> uh, conversation right here with this lovely lady. Okay, guys. So I guess True is just he he's infatuated by me and many so <laughs> he ain't got story. too much to say this right the fuck story, now. You know what I mean? So I'ma just keep it going. <laughs> we gonna get to a real quick intermission. We'll be back. In about a few more minutes and keep it with Minnie. Do not go nowhere because we're not going to do cocktails and tea segment. One thing y'all don't know about Minnie, if you don't know, you're going to know. She don't drink, baby. She is one of those girls, so it would be senseless for us to do it. But we do got a trivia coming up. And we going to get into some motherfucking tea. So don't motherfucking go nowhere. <laughs> we taking a little bit of intermission on Mystique, Mystique Talk X podcast. <laughs> we'll be right back. 